The opening hole at Northwood Club presents a great birdie opportunity as the shortest par four on the outward nine. Interestingly, the teeing ground was returned to the original location which was used in the 1952 U.S. Open. Two bunkers guard the left side of the fairway, challenging the opening tee shot. The ideal placement of the tee shot is the right center of the fairway. The green is guarded by a pair of bunkers flanking the front right of this larger green. Pins that are located in the front of the green should be a green light opportunity for players on their second shot. Take caution at pin locations on the back right corner of this green. Players must negotiate the sloping movement of the green while avoiding the bunkers. It's a great starting hole and a chance to start your round off with a great start. The second hole, a sweeping dogleg left, is the longest hole on the course. A well-struck tee shot to the right of the fairway bunker where the dogleg turns will give longer players the chance to think about going for the green in two. Those who do elect to go for the green with their second shot must deal with the cross bunkers on both sides approaching the green. Most players will play this as a three-shot hole, with the ideal layup being about 125 yards short of the multi-tiered green, one of the most challenging putting surfaces on the golf course. The third hole is one of the longest and most demanding par fours on the front nine. It plays predominantly into a cross wind. The tee shot to the right of the left fairway bunker will leave players with a middle to long iron on the approach. The deep but narrow green is protected by two deep bunkers on the left, so the best miss will be to the right of the green. Par here is a good score. The fourth hole, a subtle dogleg right, requires a well-placed tee shot. The drive to the left center of the fairway just short of the bunker will provide the best angle into the green. Club selection is critical on the approach shot to this deep green, so take note of the pin location. Players must negotiate the dramatic uphill slope, and the putting surface is protected by a pair of bunkers guarding both the left and right hand sides of the green. The fifth hole is the shortest par three in the course and arguably the easiest hole in the front nine. A beautiful golf hole with danger lurking to the right of the green, it is a visually appealing hole. A well struck iron shot will most definitely lead to birdie opportunities. Players can even hit the ball to the left of this green and be able to sneak the ball onto the putting surface. The green primarily slopes away from White Rock Creek and has a definite spine through the front center of the green creating some interesting putts. The sixth hole is one of the most difficult par fours in North Texas. The hole is steeped in history as it marked a significant turning point in the 1952 U.S. Open. This dogleg left plays as a lengthy par four from the black tees and a shorter par five from the member tee. The uphill tee shot is best placed to the right center of the fairway, which provides a clear look at the green. The approach to this small green, usually with a mid to long iron, can be tough because of the predominant southerly wind and four large bunkers that guard this green. During the 52 Open, Hogan blamed his demise on club selection when he overshot the screen with his forewood. The ball landed a foot out of bounds and he never recovered and relinquished his lead with a double bogey. Par here would have been a great score for Hogan, and the same holds true today. The seventh hole, a long par four, continues a difficult closing stretch to the outward nine. Playing into the prevailing southerly wind, the tee shot is best positioned to the right center of the fairway. The green tucked slightly back to the left is deep and narrow. With multiple bunkers guarding the left side, the preferred miss is right, leaving the player a reasonable opportunity to get up and down. Beware, shots hit over the green or the left of the green will likely get swallowed by the adjacent creek. The eighth closes out the trio of long par fours on the front nine. One of the narrowest fairways on the golf course, it demands an accurate tee shot and a long drive will hit the downslope for additional distance. The approach shot will play uphill. And players must thread the needle to the green with bunkers protecting both sides of the green. The undulating putting surface has several gentle slopes and players will be rewarded for hitting approach shots to the proper areas and letting the slope feed balls to the pin. The front nine closes with a picturesque but dangerous part three. The downhill tee shot plays to a Redan style green. Shots that come up short or to the left are in danger of landing in the meandering creek. The preferred line is to the right, allowing the natural slope to feed balls onto the putting surface. Players can be aggressive to front pins, but need to be cautious of hole locations on the back left because of the hidden bunker and creek just to the left of the putting surface. The start to the inward nine offers a gorgeous view, but a challenging test. 
conservative tee shot will put you on the right center of the fairway, leaving a slightly longer approach to the green. Players who choose to be aggressive can take the left side for a shorter approach, but this is no easy task. The fairway slopes left towards the meandering creek. The approach is complicated by the shallow green that features a bunker directly in front of the green and the creek to the right. The 11th hole is the longest par 4 on the back 9. The demanding tee shot requires precision to reach the downslope. Longer hitters who reach the bottom of the hill are left with a mid-iron approach to an uphill green. Players will want to avoid the large bunker on the right. The preferred landing area is on the left center of this narrow green. The plateaued green requires players to judge the distance of their approach shot very carefully. The 12th hole was architect Trip Davis's favorite from the original design and he left it largely unchanged. He also worked hard to preserve the natural features of the green complex, originally designed by Bill Diddle. This is usually a mid-iron shot to a relatively narrow but long green. Two bunkers flank the back left and the front right, so club selection and judging the wind are critical. The 13th hole is a very versatile golf hole with the flexibility to be used as a drivable par four by moving up the tees. Two good shots here will give you one of the best opportunities to make a birdie on the back nine. At the usual distance, players will need a precise tee shot to secure a spot in the narrow landing area. A good drive will leave players with a short iron approach hit off of a downslope. The small green complicates matters, and the need for precision is magnified by two bunkers on the front right portion of the green and two bunkers beyond the green. Pins position back right will challenge the game's best players. Northwood Club's renowned closing stretch begins on 14, the signature hole. Tucked by a grove of bamboo on a pocket along White Rock Creek, the back tees features one of the most spectacular driving vistas anywhere. Take a deep breath before pulling the trigger on your drive over the limestone cliff to the elevated fairway that bends left. On this consummate risk-reward par 5, a good drive offers the chance to reach the green in two. The journey can be perilous with two bunkers, short left and short right, fronting this deep green and the steep banks of the creek looming to the left. Those who choose to lay up will want to avoid the left fairway bunker about 100 yards out. The 15th was changed considerably in the redesign with a pond beyond the tee box and a severely undulating green. Players must think about placement off the tee. An ideal drive is to the right center of the fairway, which provides a relatively clear angle to the green. Two fairway bunkers are positioned on the left. An intimidating target bunker stands guard on the right at the turn of the dog leg. The approach will likely be played with a short iron to the most contoured green on the course. The green is dominated by a back left plateau. Chipping areas along the right side of the green will offer a safe haven for missed approach shots. The 16th is one of the most dramatically changed holes on the golf course. Its beauty is deceptive. This is the most difficult par three on the golf course. This long par three will challenge all skill levels from every set of tees. From the back tee, a player could cast a line into White Rock Creek. His primary concern will be the restored stream that meanders along the left side. Multiple bunkers to the left and right sides of the green will make the shot look even longer from the tee. The green features a large plateau which will push balls to the right into a chipping swale. Beware of pin locations on the left side because the creek does come into play. The tees were relocated to the south, which helps to accentuate the vistas and strategic lines on this hole. The 17th hole is a demanding dogleg right and plays into the prevailing southerly wind. The tee shot is of the utmost importance, with White Rock Creek securing the left-hand side. A conservative tee shot is played to the left of the two fairway bunkers on the right, leaving a mid to long iron approach shot. The more aggressive line is to flirt with the two fairway bunkers. Clear these hazards on the right, and you'll have the best angle to the green. The green complex features a slope that allows players to run the ball up to the green, The two bunkers protect the left side. The green generally slopes from left to right, Going for a back pin, remember that any shot long or to the left are in danger of landing in the creek. The closing hole at Northwood is a fitting test for this historical golf course. The challenging par four requires a well-struck tee shot to the right center of the fairway, avoiding a large fairway bunker and grove of trees on the left. 
Players face an approach shot over the creek to a rising green surrounded by a trio of bunkers, two on the left and one on the back right. The green is one of the smallest on the back nine, and balls have a tendency to kick to the front right portion of the putting surface. Far in this hole is a great score, just as it was in 1952.